do you want to learn how to hyper-personalize your mid-journey images? In this video, I will show you how to personalize your model, making the results more likely to align with your style. Until now, in mid-journey, we had two major decisions we were making. Do we want to use mid-journey's default aesthetics, or do we want to actually rely on style raw? The idea is simply, you know, if you want to use mid-journey's aesthetics, then we were adding dash dash stylize with a value attached to it to basically decide how much of the mid-journey aesthetics we want to apply to our image. If we don't want to use this, we were adding style raw. And of course, with the style reference, we were able to apply other kinds of styles as well. But with the recent change that mid-journey just published, you are now able to personalize your own model to reflect your own style in the images. So then, when you create a prompt, basically Midjourney's algorithm was filling the gaps. With the recent changes, we can now apply our own unique tastes to the images we create and fine-tune the AI model to our artistic styles and preferences. So, to do that, we are adding dash dash p to our prompts. This is how we enable personalization. Let's start with the prompt. Photo of a fat cat sumo fighter. Instead of letting the mid-journey algorithm decide on our visual aesthetics, we want mid-journey to apply our own personal style. I'll also add an aspect ratio. I'll explain in a second how exactly mid-journey knows our taste for visual aesthetics. But let's send this prompt and see what results we get. You can see in the new alpha website this new parameter, called the personalization parameter, has a special unique code. You can also share this code with others if you want other people to be able to replicate your style. There you go. We have quite realistic looking cat sumo fighters. It's because my usual aesthetics heavily rely on cinematic looking shots and realism. That's why we have these more realistic looking sumo fighter cats. If you want to always apply this personalization, you can go into settings and turn on this toggle. Every time you put a new prompt, the personalization will be automatically applied, which is really convenient. We don't need to always type the personalization parameter. We can simply apply it to the prompt and the personalization parameter will already be there. That's really convenient. Here's the end result. Now, you may be asking how Midjourney knows my personal taste. To do that, we need to train the model on what we like, and it's super easy. Now we have this new section called Tasks. When you go here, you will see you have the ranking option. If you click here, you will always see two images, and you need to choose the one you like the most from a visual aesthetics perspective. This is how you train the model. For example, here we have a more realistic looking image versus something more abstract, more polished and looking like graphic design. So I will choose this one. This automatically tells the algorithm that I prefer something closer to realism. A similar example is here. It's not always about photo versus drawing. Sometimes it will ask you about drawing versus drawing. This comparison can be about drawing style, fidelity and many things. I think this drawing looks much better, so I am choosing this. Over here, I have a cinematic looking image. Even though this image is also nice and peaceful, I want my model to be closer to cinematic realism. That's why I choose this. Sometimes, while you are ranking pairs, it gives you the same prompt but slightly different visual implementations. Here, it's completely up to you, whatever you prefer. I can see two different kinds of oil painting implementations. Purely from my perspective, this looks slightly better. Now it follows up with another comparison for the same prompt. The algorithm is trying to understand what we like. These choices are taken into account, as well as likes on the explore page. When you like a random image, its aesthetics are also taken into account. For the personalization feature to work, you need at least 200 pair rankings. You can see your total ranking count here. I have 546 rankings, which gives quite a lot of data to the mid-journey algorithm. I would also like to quickly show you how you can use it in Discord. 
They are rolling out the new website to everyone, but some people may still prefer to use it in Discord. I'm adding my prompt after the imagine command. I'm adding dash dash p here with an aspect ratio again. As you can see, it has the exact same code as I have here. It's exactly the same one and is a unique code for my personal taste. You can also default turn it on by writing the command settings and you can choose personalization. It will make it default on for you as I showed you on the website. These days, I like to use the new alpha website more often. I keep coming back to the website because it feels much more organized and not so chaotic. It's really nice. You may also wonder how these images would look without my personalization code. Let's do that as well to show you how it would look without it. Let's hit enter and see. This is the grid without the p parameter. You can see that the examples look kind of similar. I think it's because the prompt starts with photo, which brings significant realism. With my personal style, the images tend to be more cinematic. The main difference is the cinematic color correction. Let's do one example with personalization and without personalization to see the impact on the final images. I have a prompt of woman wearing butyrate plastic t-shirt and socks, glass fashion, plastic bag material, hyper-realistic style. Let's send this and see what happens. Now let's apply the same prompt, but this time adding dash dash p to see how my personalization code impacts the final image. The main difference I see is that, in addition to our subject, the material has also been applied to the backgrounds and around her. In the version with my personalized aesthetics, it's much more minimalistic and simple. Without my personal style, the composition is more chaotic, and the material is all around. While using p-parameter, the stylized parameter controls how much personalization is applied to the image. A lower stylized value will limit the personalization, while a higher value will increase it. Let's make an example with this. Let's say, if you want to reuse this prompt, stylized value of 0 would turn off personalization, and 100 is default where you see it applied here. Let's max it out and see the impact on the final image. The main difference I see is that, with the default value, I had more of a fashion photo shoot style. With a maximum stylized value, it feels more cinematic than the previous version. The backgrounds got more realistic compared to the more magazine type background, which is much simpler and minimal. You can use the personalization parameter also with chaos. Let's try to apply it with a chaos value of, let's say, 50. The chaos parameter, applied together with my personalized style, makes things quite interesting. You start to see more diverse shots. We see different types of shots, including more nature shots and grid type images. The chaos parameter, together with personalization, is a good combination to try. The last application of the personalization parameter is that we can combine it with the style reference parameter. Here, I have a prompt and a style reference code, which is a bit of a dark looking style with occasional motion in the image and darker tones. I will show you how we can combine this with my personal style by applying dash dash p. As you can see, the result is quite interesting. The cinematic realism from my personal style is now combined with movement and darker tones from the style reference. It creates quite interesting shots with some motion going on. The style reference is still quite strong in the final image. I also added a stylized value here to max out my personalized style, applied more heavily to the final image. Remember, the stylized value won't max out the style reference impact because it has another parameter called style weight. Regular stylize will max out the impact of my personalized style which results in a closer cinematic realism with less visible darker tones and motion in the final image. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you to explore personalization on mid-journey. If you want to show your support, hit the like button and join our jungle community by subscribing for more mid-journey tutorials.